Hello there, everyone. I am Carol Crafty Grandma, and today we are going to work on Bench Pillow for All Seasons, and this is the May bench cover. Um, this is part four, so in part one, we got the background all set up. We did, um, we placed, cut out and placed the applique pieces. In part two, we did all of the um, blanket stitch <laughs> around the applique. Um, part three was spent learning and discovering how to make these applique leaves, or no, they're not applique leaves, um, they're 3D leaves. So they're two pieces of fabric with batting in between, so just like a quilt would be. It, it has three layers, a front and back, and a layer of batting. And then we've placed them on here. I've got them on here right now with um, pins. Uh, we're gonna sew them on today and get those sewn on. Um, and then the other thing we have to do today, after we do that, uh, well, before we do that, we have to learn how to make yo-yo flowers. Um, I'm sure this is not terribly difficult. Um, but I purposely, as I've told you in the past, these are things that I have not necessarily done before and I'm not going to just test it out and see how it works the first time and come back and say, hey, look how perfect I am. Um, we're going to see how this works. Um, I do feel like I've tried it at least once and it didn't work for me, but um, I could be wrong. Uh, there is a different version of this, a flower shaped, in my, in my box that you... You can't see that box anymore. Um, that box that has, because I have different sizes of these. Um, when I worked and got a discount at a uh, craft shop, I bought a bunch of things because you never know when you might need them. And 15, 20 years later, I'm finally using it. Um, so I've put, you saw the fabric I have at, in the intro. So... Uh, we talked about this in the past few episodes. So this fabric on the outside is actually a green fabric. Um, the background is green. There's a yellow flowers, there's blue flowers, and there's pink flowers. Um, the pink has a darker, almost um, burgundy color as its border. There's a light blue and a dark blue on the trim, and then the yellow has the light yellow with the yellow. I think because I used this yellow background, kind of, I mean, it's more of a tan, but it, 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 it's pulling out more of the yellow in these borders. And as I look at it on my display screen, which is just above my camera, um, I don't actually see the flowers in much detail. So I made blue birds instead of red birds, which is what was on the thing, but they had a red border and I, I changed the color scheme all up. Um, so I made blue birds instead of red birds, thinking that would help pull it out. And if you go back to part three, before we put the leaves on here, this border was even more washed out with yellow. Um, it, was, it was a lot more yellow. Um, so I'm not going to use any yellow fabric for flowers. I think that that would just put too much yellow on it. I've got some dark blue here. So I'm hoping, well, kind of blends in with my shirt. So that's gonna be, I didn't think about that. So we've got the dark blue here and I'm hoping that will bring out more of the dark blue in the border. I'm definitely going to use this darker it's a pink, almost with a burgundy on it, so this will look just like the flowers. And then, dependent upon my mood, I may or may not use any of these three. Um, I don't think I will. I think I'm just going to go with these two. Um, does it say how many flowers I need? Oh, hey, baby girl. You want to come say hi? Okay, you're already saying hi. Gotcha. You going to take a nap on there? I don't think I'm going to need it. You should be fine. Um, yeah, let me, let me love the cat just a minute. Okay, baby, you should be fine. I don't think I have anything to iron today, so you should be fine. You just sleep there. Yes, you have a good rest. 
All right, baby. A very needy kitty cat today. Not certain why. She's been a very needy kitty cat today. All right. Well, and Steve has left the house. Uh, Pegasus, our second car, was having trunk issues. It, the trunk didn't want to stay closed, so he had to take it to the dealership. So that may be why I'm getting kitty love, too, because he's not in his office working. So we have to go find someone else to love us. And, yeah, we're going to be needy. Yeah. Mwah. Okay. All right, sweetie. All right, so we're going to make flowers. And then we're going to attach the leaves. We're going to attach the flowers. Uh, we've got to put legs on the bird. I'm scared to death. I'm going to forget to put the legs on the birds. I don't know. I'm scared to death about that. Um, and then I'm going to need buttons. Little itty bitty buttons for birdie eyes. So we're going to have to go through, sort through the... Because it says this is half inch buttons, but I know when I made this and put the buttons in here, some of them are... More like, let's see, that's two-fourths, so a quarter inch. No, that's not right. A half is two-fourths. Yes, I was right. Okay, so half of that is a quarter. Yeah, that's, I don't know why I can't do math today, but yes. So some of these could be quarter, some of these could be eighths. Lord only knows what size they are. So we're going to. Put buttons on and then get the envelope back put on there um, hopefully that will get it and we will get this all taken care of in one two hour episode I'm, I'm questioning my ability especially with my assistant today who is obviously going to be jumping on my lap and and not happy that I'm not loving her she is definitely in a mood all right good baby Yes, you're a good baby. All right. And we do have to be done in two hours, just in case the car has to stay at the car dealership and I have to go get Steve. So we are definitely going to be done at the two-hour mark today, potentially earlier, just because not certain how this is all going to work. All right. So let's first see. Well, I don't care about the leaves. To make the flowers, refer to the yo-yo, make a total of seven flowers from assorted pink and yellow tonals. Again, I'm not doing pink and yellow. I'm doing pink and blue because I think there's more than enough yellow already on that quilt top. Doesn't say which colors need more of because it doesn't really matter. Again, it's your quilt. Keep that in mind. I, I'm reading the directions. I do try and follow the directions just because I liked for you all to see what it's supposed to look like officially. So this is a hard one for me. I can't think of any real reason that I would need this, but you never know. So I'm going to keep it. I'm going to put it over here with that stuff, which is questionable stuff. You never know when you might need it. All right. There's the pink. Now, yeah. I don't need the book because the book is not going to tell me anything I don't already know at this point. So the flowers are going to be attached on the pillow top through the middle so that the edges of the flower pop out. The edges of the leaves will pop out and the edges of the flowers will pop out. So this is a three-dimensional quilt. Technically, I could take my fabric here and iron it so that I could use that all of it was straight. But I don't feel like bothering her. Callie is quite comfortable. All right, Calliope, you happy girl? Yes, she's very comfortable. We're going to leave her alone. And we don't have to iron this. I only need to make, it said nine. I need to highlight that somewhere. Make it to seven. Seven. Um, so maybe four of these. So I'm not really going to need to get into too much of it, so I'm not going to worry about it. All right. First, I have to open it. It's one of those things where it's got the sticky part on the bottom. 
and we pull it out. All right. Then this is taped on to the cardboard. And the book did specifically say to use that, I mean, you, apparently you can make yo-yos or these things without the yo-yo maker, but if you were using a yo-yo maker, use a 30 millimeter one, and that's exactly what this is. All right. And directions. So we're going to move the fabric out of the way. We're going to bring this around over to here. And how's that going? this and there we go all right go there let's see does that work so the first thing I need to know there is a plate and a disc A plate and a disc. Well, that's cool. They go together. That took some effort, but okay. And now it's still popping out. All right. Well, all right, now it's solid. All right. All right, let's see. Do not use with thick or hard materials, excessive force, yada, yada, yada. We're just using cotton. We're fine. Well, making sure the back of the cloth is facing the back of the disc. Place the cloth and the disc onto the plate. Let's see here. Let's cut some fabric out. fabric. So this and this. Now it says something about making sure so there's there's a line here. I don't know if you can see it. There are three lines on the disc, and there are three dots. So I'm assuming when it says line those up, those are the three things we're lining up. All right. And it popped in quite nicely at that point, so that was good. If I have enough fabric there, let's pop this out and try that again. Let's do it a little more evenly. All right. Hopefully we have enough fabric now. There we go. Actually, that works because the middle of it is kind of looking at the, where the fabric is going to land. Okay. I need a needle. I have a sewing needle. There we go. Oh, I'm going to need thread. I forgot thread. All right, so I don't use my other sewing machine very often, so I'm going to use the bobbin with white thread. And this is cotton 50 weight thread. And I don't think I'm going to be able to thread the needle on camera because it's going to be too far away. But let me try. Let's see here. I have a needle threader doohickey. And I know it's somewhere nearby because I've seen it recently. But I just can't remember where I saw it couldn't locate it quickly this morning. All right, 
I have to do it over here, sorry. <laughs> Maybe I won't do it off camera either. Come on. So an easy way to thread is to cut it at a slight angle. And then go through the eye. And I say that and it's just, I don't have my, my, uh, enlarging glasses. What do they call those? Come on. There we go. All right. So step number two. Insert the disc into the plate. Firmly press the aligned disc into the plate. Cut the cloth leaving 1 8 to 3 16 seam allowance. Well, all right. That's probably closer to a quarter. But for the first time, we're going to see how this goes. All right. All right. Fold the seam towards the disc and hold it with your finger. Insert the hook from the disc side. Make a knot at one end of the thread. All right, so I don't know how much thread we're gonna need, so I'm gonna make it long. Make a knot at the end of the thread. You know what, I'm gonna do double thread just because I want to. And if it doesn't work, we'll find out. All right. So line up both ends of the thread. Tie a knot. I usually do a double knot. At least I try when I'm hand sewing. And now you can all see why I don't hand sew very often. I am not extremely proficient at this. It really drives me crazy. All right, I'm gonna go with that. Okay. So start at one of the dots. All right, did that. Go in. Insert the needle into the concave part of the disc, which is behind the seam. All right, so I'm putting it in there. And go all the way through. All right, push the needle in through the disc side and out through the plate side. Starting point was there, okay, out. Now I go in. And I go out, there's little circles here. And 
then I go in. All right, it says common mistakes. Let's read. Repeating steps four and five, continue sewing counterclockwise along the entire circumference while holding down the seam with fingers at each stitch. Okay, I've been doing that. So making sure you're holding down the fabric in the back. Be careful not to sew outside the holes by going from one hole to another. Doing so will prevent the plate from being removed. All right. So now we're going to go up that hole. Down this one. Up. Down. Up. Nope. Hold on. The screen on my tablet just it went away. There we go. Getting towards the end here. Hey, Cal. Apparently she decided I wasn't paying enough attention to her. She's going to leave the building. Well, at least the room. And down. And that's all. Okay. So I've got, oops. What did I do there? All right. So I've gone all the way around. Superimpose and sew together the two. Okay, so do it one more time. So I did that. So I'll go one more time over where I started. Start and yes. And there. All right. When you reach the end point, pull the needle out from the right side of the first slotted hole. Do not pierce the knot from the left side of the same hole. Pull the needle out to the disc side. Do not remove the needle from the thread. Also, do not yet make a knot. All right, so we've gotten all the way to the end. Now we're going to stop. All right. Remove the disc from the plate. All right. Remove the cloth from the disc by lifting the seam. All right. Close the seam by pulling the thread. not getting the tail end here. Some of it's not pulling. Let's see. There we go. That's all that. All right. And is this, that's the beginning. It 
does not seem to want to pull this tail end here. I do not know why. Let's see here. Oh, because the thread is knotted. That explains it. So I'm not the thread. There we go. All right. And now we have a little flower. That is a tiny flower, but hey, we'll live with it. Okay. When the opening is closed, make a knot. Insert and remove the needle in the crease to hide the knot. All right, so. If we go in, because this is the back side of the flower, so we're never gonna see it. It's gonna be attached to the quilt. We go in, we go out, that is a knot. Actually, I'm going to go in and out on the other side of the flower, on some of the fabric, just because I want to. All right. So that is a knot, and we will cut. And that is a single flower. Woohoo! We have one done. All right, we do not need two layers of thread. I now realize that. One will be just fine for what we're doing. And I need another little square of fabric. All right, so we try this again. Okay. So the line points to the dot. There we go. Trim the fabric a little bit. All right. Not in the thread. Fabric folded over, go in, oops, that was wrong. Can I pull that through? I can, that knot was tiny, I thought it was. Let's try this again, just to make sure we get a decent, that's not a decent knot either. That should be good. All right, and we need to go in on that side. We're gonna go counterclockwise. So yes, that side. All right, fabric down, in, out, in. Ooh, this is what happens when you have too much thread. Make 
make sure the fabric is down. Otherwise, you won't be able to pull it to just tighten it. Oops, lost the thread. Definitely should have been found that needle threader. Gosh, that's going to drive me crazy. Hold on just a second. Let me see if it's right here somewhere. I know. I just used it not that long ago. So it shouldn't be that far. But of course it is. That's not it. That's not it. Huh. All right. Let's see here. Let me bring it closer to my eyes and see if I can see it that way. Just can't. I don't think I'm going to be able to do it on the camera because it's just too far away from my vision. There we go. Come on. Oh, I had it. There we go. All right. All right. Here we go. Back to sewing. And we got to this point, we do this last one, and then we double up on where we started. All right. Now we push it through. We take this piece out. Pull it all into a big poof and Oops. Well, that 
messed it up. All right, we have two done. Let's make a blue one. Just let myself see a different color. And I'm gonna pull my bench out so I can sit. <sighs> Which takes me like 20 minutes to get on, but we can do it. All right. I'm on my bench. Let's adjust the camera so that I can sew in front of the kit bench. Are these pieces of fabric going to work? Barely. So it does appear that if you're going to use uh, jelly roll strips, you can. the biggest you're going to be able to make is obviously this 30 millimeter. Let's see how this is going to work. I put the little dot. Oh, you can't see what I'm doing. Let me, let me fix that. Let's see here. Is that going to work or is it going to fall over? It's probably going to fall over every time I go near it. All right, so we've got our dot on the top. Got our line. We need to make sure that we have, because there's not a lot of fabric here. I'm not, we're not quite on the dot. All right, let's get this. Just a little bit more. Come on. I think that's it. We all in there? No, we're not actually attached. So let's try this. There we go. I heard a click that time. All right, that's going to be tight. So let's. Can I pull a little bit of that up? Yeah, but I pulled too much of it. Oh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to use this blue fabric or not. Because that is really close. It has to be in here just right. Woo! There we go. I knew I was going to hit that camera at some point. Now, let's see. All right. So we have to knot our thread. Helps if you could tie a knot, Carol. There we go. All right. Now we want to go on this side because we want to go around that way. So we go down here. fabric stays back and gets caught. And we go in there. I got it on the fabric. Excellent. I was supposed to trim the fabric. Oh well. I will trim it before we take it out of the little gadget here.
And I had already decided I was only making three of the blue because I made the, uh, the birds blue. So I figured that was enough blue. And honestly, based on the fact that I'm going to have to work at getting the fabric right, I'm glad I'm only making three of the blue and four of the pink. I'm going to trim this down now. Don't cut the thread, moron. All right, why is that thread? Oh, that's the end. That's fine. Woo, there goes the camera again. Caught it? Yes, I caught it. All right. Do not unthread the needle again. There we go. All right. Now, go back up through here, making sure we got, yep, we have fabric in there. And then back that way, yeah. And then up through here, excellent. And down, let's make sure we have, oh, we almost didn't get fabric, see? Fabric's really close to the edge there. We need to make sure we get in the fabric. There we go. And now repeat that first starting spot over and over, excellent. All right, pop it out of that. Take it out of here. And now pull. Come on. There we go. And squish it around a little bit so it's a poof. And pick up our needle. And do a little knot. another knot just to make sure it's all sealed there we go and now we have a blue puff so look at our puffs Three so far. Four to go. Two more blue, two more pink. All right. Let's get this lined up because this is challenging. Touchy. There we go. Let's see if it sits better that way. All right. Oh, that's nowhere near right.
There we go. All right. Tie a knot. And we want to start here. Come on. There we go. Oops, didn't tie a big enough knot. I should have known that was gonna happen. I was surprised it didn't happen the last one. Pull the thread out again. Dang it. Come on. We might I could dump, we may have to make a fifth part to this series just because it takes me twelve hours to thread a needle. That's not gonna be a pleasant thing. Yeah, we're not gonna get done today. There's no way. No way at all we're gonna get done. So there's gonna be another part tomorrow. Okay, now this is going to be touchy because you see the fabric, there's not a ton of it there. And we need to go through. Come on. Did I not line it? Oh, I'm not going through the hole correctly. There we go. Going too far to the edge trying to get the fabric in. Come on. There we go. All right, now. Actually, I think I didn't get them lined up perfectly. I think that's what the problem is with this particular one. Because as I'm going through, they're just not lined up quite right. I can feel the plastic fighting with me. I've got to fight, find it. All right, so there's that. Yeah, it's off by a bit. Let's see if I can get this adjusted at all. There we go. So if it's adjusted correctly and everybody's in line, this is not that difficult of a task. If the plastic rings are off of each other, then this becomes much more challenging. And I forgot to trim the fabric again. And look, see the circles popping right out. Dang it. Well, now I know it's in. The question is, how badly did I mess up the alignment? Do not fall out again. There we go. All right, let's see. Did I get 
fabric. I got fabric. Excellent. in the last spot. Excellent. Pop it out. Take this thing out of here. And pull. Then we flatten. I guess if I was sitting around watching television, I could make a bazillion of these. Because um, one of the things they show is using it to make there it is, a purse. Cover the entire outside of a purse with these things. I think I'd kill myself if I had to make too many of these. They're cute. They're not difficult to make, at least not with the gadget. Um, I know you can make these manually. You just cut out circles, or without the gadget, I should say, not necessarily manually, because this is kind of manual. Um, you cut out circles, and then you sew around the circle evenly so that everything comes together and you get a nice round circle. Um, yeah, that can be done. Uh, but I just, I don't find that they're all that adorable. I mean, the bigger ones on the directions they show, uh, not this size obviously, but you can put buttons on the middle. Um, so you can make different things with them. Um, in addition to just flowers. Um, and I mean, agreed, if I didn't have a camera between me and the gadgets. Oh, dang it. I had it in there. I had the thread in there, and then I pulled it out. Um, there we go. Now, over on that side. There we go. Um, that would probably make it easier. But I just don't find them all that adorable that I would just have to have them. But this is part of the fun that I like of doing projects like this where um, these bench pillows have some different things in them that I I don't normally do. Um, I don't do nearly as much applique as they have in this series. Um, they do a lot of applique and I never really I mean, I've done tons of applique, but they just have it. I think there's only one 
month, and that was July, that did not have applique on it. And then obviously this stuff is new. I do like the way the leaves came out where you put the basically quilt the, the leaves. Woo, there goes the camera again. And um, they become three-dimensional on the quilt. I do like that. And I may have to try and implement that into a quilt or two that I design at some point. Or actually even a purse. Oops, that's not quite right, huh? Come on. There we go. That click is now a very satisfying sound to me. That means I've got it where it needs to be. All right, where's my needle? There's my needle. I've got my knot in. Excellent. And I need to start over here. And go down. Like I said, this is fairly easy to do. I could see sitting around in front of the TV making a bunch of these. But now, once I go to put them on the quilt, in this particular case, it's not going to be a terribly big deal. But if I were putting on a bunch of them, like that purse, can I hold the st camera stand down? I cannot. So the camera keeps falling further and further down as we go. So I have to set it up a little bit. So hopefully we're at an angle, but maybe you can still see it. Nope, my hand's going to be in the way. And when my hand's not in the way, I'm going to be pulling it. There we go. Let's see. All right, and now we are back at the start. So we go one more time where we started and out. There we go. Pop it out. We've got a really nice all the way around. Take the disc out. I think that's what they called it. Set that aside for a minute and pull. You just have to make sure that it stays rounded as you're going around and going through. You don't want it to pull and have everything upside down. Now that one's not pulled through yet. There we go. 
All right. Push it down a little bit so it makes a circle. And put in a nut. We now have three blue flowers. We still need two more pink. And sadly, you cannot do these more than one at a time. You have to do them individually. circle dot goes on the top away well facing away from me in this case and I make sure my line lines up and then I hear clicks and that clicks are good then I trim Wonderful. And here we go again. Round and round we go. Oops. Back at the beginning, so we double, go, we go over the starting point again. Wonderful. Oops. So I got myself caught in the thread when I went through that. There we go. All right, pop it out. Got our white lines. You can't see as well on this fabric as you could on the blue fabric, but it's there. Pull out our disc. And there we go. Our little 
circle and knot off our thread. One more time. There we go. All right, last one. I'm going to knot this thread right now. That's really low. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get a second one on there. Yeah, that may or may not work. We'll have to find out after we start stitching because it's close. All right, fabric. Maybe after I did a hundred of these, I'd be really good at it. It'd be a great way to use up fabric that you've got little pieces of. Which, by the way, I've been trying not to save. So for me, I shouldn't want to make these because then I'll want to save more fabric. And it's, I have enough fabric saved as it is. I don't need to try and save any more pieces of scrap fabric. definitely gotten faster now that I know what I'm doing I don't have to think about it nearly as much just sort of pop these things in and out and sew around them we're at the end so we go back into where we started and out to the next one. Pop. Poof. And not. All right, hello there. I am going to put this into my needle case or whatever we want to call it. Put the yo-yo maker over there and camera, oh yeah, let's get that camera over there.
more out of the way than it was. Get the yo-yo maker and the needle out of the way. I will have to put those together and put them away later. Bobbin, pins, all that good stuff. Direction, oh, there goes the camera. It doesn't like to sit on up when it's too far up. Oh, I didn't close the, that explains it. There we go. Now it'll stay nice and straight. Actually, let's lay it down because I'm not gonna need it anymore today. All right. Got everything ready to go? Yep, there we go. Off of my little bench that I have here. Put that back underneath. There's a pair of socks down there. I don't know how those got there. I don't think I want to know. Oh, they're my socks, so I obviously did it, but hey, I don't know. Okay, so now we have seven flowers. And let's see. One, two, go there. One, two, go there. And then these three I can determine wherever I want. Okay. So, at the base. of this leaf. We want these two. Those two. These two are going to go over here. And then I need one at the base of the bird, which is not going to be blue. That would be silly. So one down here. A single one there and here now. Nope. The other way around. There we go. There. All right. So this leaf does not have a flower on it. That is correct. Okay. So how do the flowers look? Okay, so on the screen, I'm not seeing much of them. From back here, they're looking okay. And the blue does go very nicely with the blue in the border. And the pink actually works very nicely with the pink in the border. All right, let's see, what time are we looking at? We have 45 minutes. You know what? Just because of the situation with our car, um, I am going to go ahead and call it a day. We, are gonna, we have to do a part five. And there's no... If I finish off the leaves and the flowers today, the only thing I will have to do in part five is the envelope, which will take 30 minutes max. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop today, and on part five, we are going to stitch on the leaves and the flowers and the bird's legs and the eyes and make the envelope. 
which because I can see it taking me an hour and a half to get all that stitching done and then the 30 minutes to make the envelope. Um, if I start this and do 45 minutes here, then part five is going to be messy. It's going to start in the middle of something instead of starting at the beginning of something. And it just doesn't make sense to me. So we're going to call it a day. Um, we've got our yo-yos made. I may even rename the episode yo-yo made or hashtag yo-yos, something along those lines. Um, and then we will finish we will finish this up in part five um, Wednesday. So today is Monday. Part five will be tomorrow, which is Tuesday. Um, the next project we are going to do is a bag. Um, I don't have the bag pattern to show you. Well, I don't have the bag directions to show you because they're out in the other room, but I can show you the size of the bag. Um, this I am probably going to cut out of vinyl. I have some white vinyl here that I already own. I have some gray vinyl that's arriving tomorrow or today. Um, so I'm going to use that. This is the gusset that goes around. So it's about that wide. Um, and then there is a contrasting fabric to cut out to go down the middle of the bag. Um, and I am going to be using uh, American Patriotic fabric in addition to the vinyl. I have not decided whether I'm using a military fabric or a just a Stars and Stripes kind of a fabric. I've got both um, and I keep going back and forth. I'm leaning towards just a... They're sunglasses with red and white stripes and then blue with stars in them. They're really cool. It's a really cool fabric. Um, but the other thing I will be using is this. It's called EM I shielding and RFI shielding. Um, so I'm going to put this, layer this in the purse, and that way if your credit cards are in there or even your cell phone, your cell phone won't work if it's in your purse, if it's in this purse, because it won't be able to get a signal through. Um, so we are going to be using that. But So that's going to be later this week. We're going to get that project started, and it's probably going to take all three of Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday of next week. Um, and if you didn't know, I have started doing knitting on Thursdays. So my Thursday episodes are knitting. If you're following me on Facebook, there is a different page. It's Carol's Carol Crafty Grandma slash knitting and crochet or knit and crochet, one of the two. Um, but if you're following me on YouTube, it's all on my channel. Um, it's just going to pop up if you if, make sure you subscribe that way when things come up you're automatically going to get notified of new videos but all right so we'll call it a day today and I will see you all again uh, tomorrow and if you're watching this later on don't forget to watch part five <laughs>